Welcome to Specific Love. Today I decided to make a custom end table that would fit in about any home. Let's begin. Alright, to get this started, I went through a bunch of my scraps, pulled out a bunch of 2 by 4s and a bunch of one buys. I'm hoping to use primarily scraps for this so I don't have to cut it into a bunch of new wood. The 2 buys, of course, are going to be laying flat and the one buys are going to fit in the middle here. So I'm going to have to cut the one buys basically in half so that they're not too long. So, let's go cut a bunch of wood. Since I need to do a bunch of repetitive cuts, I'm going to set up a stop block here. We're going to measure this out so that all I have to do is line up the wood and don't have to worry about measuring everything out every single time. Okay, we're going to rip these down on the table saw. As you see here, I have some holes in this one, so I'm not going to be able to use this side as well. I may or may not, but primarily I'm going to cut this one down to one long strip, and then I'm also going to cut some of these others down. Now that we have all the wood cut, we can start assembly. But first, we gotta test fit all this, then we need to stain it, and then we'll see about getting it together. Now to get everything to look a little more uniform, I need to go along all these edges. And the reason why is on these small pieces, they're nice and sharp, and where I've cut the two by fours, they're also real sharp. And the sides over here are actually smooth and curved. And to get all of everything to look correctly, I need to go over it with my router. We're going to knock down all those edges. Now to get these small ones, it is kind of dangerous to get your hand anywhere close to it. So I'm going to use a clamp. Now I tried to use the router on the ends to smooth these down and as you see here I have a bunch of tear out. So I'm actually going to have to take just a hand sander and go across these and make them nice and smooth. Now if you've ever dealt with real bricks you'll know they're not perfectly smooth. And so all these little imperfections on here is actually a good thing, gives it that realistic look. Now there are a few places on here that are really rough and I'm just going to go over and sand it down a little bit. But for the most part you want to leave a lot of the rough edges just to give it that texture. Now to connect all these together, we're going to flip them all over and we're going to strategically drill in some pocket holes. But we're going to do it at a certain depth so that they, the screws, these two and a half inch ones, will reach all the way across and grab all three boards. And that way we can hold them all together and it does not poke through the top. And that way we can know that it's nice and strong and with a minimal number of screws. Now before we screw all these together, we want to stain it. The reason why is that if they're already all screwed together and we try to stain it, there's a very good chance that some of this will bleed over onto the wrong piece. Now for the larger pieces, I'm going to use a traditional cherry. That way it still has that red tone, but it's not an overwhelming feeling of red. And then for all the middle pieces, the, the mortars, I'm going to use a weathered gray. And together, those should look really good. Right, now that all the stain has dried, we're going to take all these and flip these upside down. The reason why they're upside down is my surface here is flat and I know that if I lay all these in the order they need to be facing down, the top surface of the table, when it is fully complete, will be flat. So now we're going to slowly take these apart, make sure they're all glued, and then we're going to screw all these together. Now that we have all these glued, I want to try and make sure it's 100% straight before we add the screws. That looks pretty good. I want to add some quick clamps on here. This will ensure that everything stays still and doesn't move while we're putting the screws in. All right, now that we have all the screws in, we're gonna take these clamps off. Then we're gonna flip this thing over and make sure there's no glue squirting out. Otherwise, we're gonna have to wipe it off. All right, we do have some glue, as you can see here and here. So we're gonna get a damp cloth and, mark, and wipe that off. 
Now that we have this completely screwed and glued together, we're gonna add some legs. I'm gonna go with some hairpin legs that were already pre-made. Uh, I got these off of Amazon. If you're interested in these, I'll put a link in the description below. But uh, these were about $18 when I purchased them, and we're gonna add these to the bottom. If you've never installed hairpin links, it can sometimes be a challenge getting the screws in, so you may need one of these long extensions so that you can angle the drill in whatever angle it needs to be so that you can reach each of these screws. Keep that in mind. Now these hairpin links came with these additional little pieces that go right on the ends here and it keeps you from scratching the floor and it just has a little more resistance instead of it sliding around. All right, so now for the moment of truth. I think that looks pretty good. Now I am going to put a urethane finish over this to protect it because just the stain isn't good enough to protect the wood, so let's get started on that. Now there's a great way to turn some scrap wood into an awesome looking brick table. But the best thing about this is that you not only can use this inside your house, if you put a couple more coats of urethane on it, you could even use it outside on your front porch or maybe even on your deck. Now if you enjoyed this project, make sure you click the like button. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. I also have some other videos right over here. Make sure you check those out.